Hey, Doug Walker here. I was gonna lose you anyway. Since I've been gone, I've discovered the source of ultimate power. Jim Carrey is back chasing a small blue cartoon character voiced by Ben Schwartz. Yes, that is a strange thing to be typecast as in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. So before I say what I think of this movie, I should probably let you know what I thought of the first one. As if the majority of you watching don't know, I was not a big fan of the first one, though I by no means hated it. I like the attitude of the film, I thought I had a funny attitude, it was cool seeing Sonic on the big screen, I love that they redesigned him, I mean, I'd be lying if I said I didn't kinda get chills seeing on the big screen like this character I grew up with in the 90s, but even though the attitude was funny, I didn't think the lines were very funny, I feel like it didn't capture what I thought the Sonic games were. Sonic is a character that goes to fantasy worlds and he interacts with other animal characters and he stops these giant robot machines or turning the animals into robots. That's Sonic to me and in the first one they just kind of shoved him in a car like it's Hop 2 with James Marsden and that didn't win me over but I know there's a lot of people who really like the 90s cliches they put in there and like it was a throwback to these 90s cliches these road trip movies but those are just the 90s cliches I didn't get into. So I get people who like them, and by God, you let me know that you liked it. <laughs> I didn't think Sonic fans were gonna get into it, but they really, really did. It still didn't win me over, but I understand why some people really get into it. But now we have this second one, and I have uh, some real bad news for you. There isn't one car they shove him in. They instead replace it with these other animal characters that he talks with, and then it gets really weird when he's looking for like emeralds in like these temples and they have like booby traps, like a game. And, and that's just not what I am looking for. There's an excellent scene where he is in a boat. That's my Sonic. That is my hedgehog. We want more boat. Bring back the boat. Bring. This was a lot of fun. I really, really like this movie. To me, I think this captures much more what the Sonic games were like and a lot of Sonic properties were like. There's a lot more animal characters that are really likable. The laughs in this really made me laugh hard. I wanna make it clear, not every joke works in this. In fact, if I had to like add them all up, if I did like a count of every joke in this, I'd probably say about half of them don't work and they painfully don't work. But the other half that does, I mean, I was like howling at some of these jokes. Like the first scene with Jim Carrey on this mushroom planet, he has a line like, I must escape my portobello purgatory. There was no writing like that in the first film. Uh, there's another great scene where they walk into this really rough place and of course they wanna show how rough this place is and I don't wanna give it away, but the way they <laughs> emphasize and go over the top how intimidating this place is, especially one scene involving a fish. I won't give it away, but man, Man, I mean, I laugh so loud I pretty much embarrass myself. I had to control myself from how much I was laughing. But on top of that, you have stuff that to me is much more reminiscent of a Sonic movie. You have him snowboarding down a mountain. You have Jim Carrey in this giant robotic version of himself. You have Knuckles who is really badass in this and looks cool. Obviously has a great voice with Idris Elba, but also is legitimately funny too. He reminds me a lot of Dax from Guardians of the Galaxy where he's this tough character but the humor for him doesn't feel manipulative, it doesn't feel out of place, it feels like, yeah, these are the kind of jokes this character would make, and that he's not really purposefully making jokes, it's more him not understanding jokes, and that's great to Sonic, who does nothing but make jokes. You are terrible at this! Your negative attitude is not helping. Shit, if negative attitudes didn't exist, he still looked like this. Tails, who, you know, doesn't have that many jokes, but is very, very innocent and obviously wants to follow Sonic around like a big brother, and he's very adorable, he's very cute. They have some really heartwarming moments together that a lot of them are quick, but, but they're effective. You don't need that much. The scenes that do not work, and sometimes they so don't work they almost work, and that's gonna sound crazy, but I'll tell you what I mean in a second, is again, a lot of the human stuff. And I'm very thankful that they keep James Marsden and a lot of the side characters out of a good chunk of it, but they are not completely out of the movie. They still make appearances every once in a while, and man, it just slows everything down. To a point where there is actually 15 to 20 minutes of the movie where Sonic just disappears 
in the middle of it, and it's centered around not even James Marsden, but his wife, and I forget if it's her friend or sister, because again, I don't remember the first film that well, and this twist in the middle that is so ridiculous it's kind of phenomenal like we were really really laughing hard at it but then it just keeps going they just focus on these characters that barely gotten any attention and it feels like a troll move it feels like a 100 percent troll move so even in that respect i couldn't get that angry because man it takes balls to insult the audience like that. Like, we're just gonna forget the main characters and just focus on these side characters who have barely made an impact on the plot at all. We stick together, no matter what. Yeah, for a guy who's separated from him for most of the movie, that's very powerful. And I apologize if you really like James Marsden and the human characters in the first film, but I mean, for me, in the next one, I'd be totally okay if they just did the Thor, Ragnarok, Natalie Portman treatment. Like, Knuckles just goes up to Sonic and is like, it is a shame you dumped James Marsden. Like, he doesn't even use the character's name, he just says James Marsden, and Sonic's like, yeah, that sucks. Wanna go inside a giant pinball machine? And he's like, yes, I do. And I would be totally okay with that. I would have no problem. No, better yet. Phoenix just shows up at the beginning of the movie, kisses James Marsden's character, Sonic shows up and he's like, you killed James Marsden! And she's like, yes I did. And he's like, thank you! And another movie starts and I'd be okay! And they go somewhere else to have some Sonic adventures. This movie is a mess, but it's a very fun mess. It's the kind of mess you want to see Sonic in. You want to see him jump from place to place, weird situation to weird situation, avoiding traps and odd characters. Some things, you know, you just gotta put up with, like there's a dance-off in this movie and it comes out of nowhere, but even that just gets so over-the-top strange sometimes, I couldn't help but laugh at it. My thought about the comedic writing in this is that I feel like there's some big movies being released based on popular franchises that have some good writers, and then there's just one 60-year-old grandma whose idea of being young is quoting stuff she heard in the late 90s and early 2000s. Like, hate is gonna hate makes a lot of appearances in this. There's a Limp Biscuit reference. They refer to Oprah. Oprah hasn't been on the air for years. Why would Sonic the Hedgehog know who Oprah is? So like, for every one of these lines. For a guy named Knuckles, you are really bad at punching. You'll get one of these lines. No, my God. Like the guest director of a squeakle took over. I don't know, I just feel like with some of these movies coming out, like Tom and Jerry and Space Jam, A New Legacy, like they got some good writers in there and they're capturing the spirit and the voice, but then there's just that 60 year old writer who's like, you won't believe what I heard on Live Journal. But the good news is when a joke doesn't work and it can be very painful, a good joke usually follows after, or something that really makes the characters very endearing and charming. Jim Carrey is about as threatening and hilarious as he was in a series of unfortunate events like it really was giving me callbacks to that because first of all he isn't just weird for the sake of being weird in this that was another thing i couldn't get into in the first one this one he's away on this mushroom planet he's going crazy everything that he's saying and all the strange ways he's acting makes sense because he wants revenge on him and it's a lot more humorous there's a very funny scene where he just jumps onto this car onto the windshield and tries biting his way through the glass just because he wants sonic so much that is so funny because it's properly motivated you know sonic beat him to me that got a really really big laugh. Tails is flying the goddamn plane in this and I'll be honest if Tails just showed up in that plane and they never explain where it came from I will be okay with that because that is weird that is strange that is inventive and that is from the game and it's fun but they still go to the extra effort of showing where this plane comes from and even how Tails would be able to fly it a little bit he has sort of all these little gizmos and sometimes they work sometimes they don't so even working that in shows the extra effort I just felt there was so much more effort in this trying to tie it back into the game but also work as a movie now with that said if you don't know who Sonic the Hedgehog is, if your introduction is uh, the first film and this film, you're probably not going to get into this. You're going to be like, what the hell is going on? Why is this jumping from weird thing to weird thing? I think you have to have some awareness of Sonic the Hedgehog or growing up with him or, or like the character or the games. And if not, 
this is just gonna be pure bonkers madness to you. But for anyone that knows who Sonic the Hedgehog is, which I think is, you know, the majority of people, I think you're gonna have a good time with this. You know what, screw it, I have no idea. Sonic fans, I don't know what you want in a movie, I'm just saying it right now, I'm saying I had a real good time with this, and this is coming from a guy who does enjoy the shows and the games, but couldn't get into the first movie. As a guy who could not get into the first movie, this won me over. I had a real, real good time with it. So let's give this three out of four human teeth CG blue version of Bob from Kablam. With all that said, what'd you think? I know I made some jokes about the first Sonic movie, and again, I really get people who enjoy it, and if you do, that's awesome, but if you really like the first movie, what are your thoughts on this one? Do you feel like it came through? Do you feel like it's even better than the first one? Or do you feel like maybe it was too all over the place and didn't make sense, and you like it a little bit more slower pace with uh, characters talking more and just figuring each other out like in the first one? I love to know your thoughts, and I will just see you next time. Take care.